my previous videos, I have often mentioned a world empire of ancient German-speaking people. Did these people build the pyramids, cathedrals, and other grandness? Possibly. Their kingdom was destroyed, their buildings blasted to pieces, or buried underwater, sand, and mud. Only few remain. Here's a 1572 map showing Cairo, here called Cairo Babylon, with 12 pyramids atop hills. Only three remain, the rest are destroyed and are buried. From the fertile lands turned into barren desert, we get legends about Atlantis, Lemuria, and in more recent years, Tartaria. The defeated people became known as indigenous tribes, while the French, British, German, Dutch, and other armies traveled the world to occupy their territories and erase any remains of their former identity. The Native Americans, the Aborigines of Australia, the Maori of New Zealand, the indigenous of Siberia, no matter where I looked, I found traces of the same ancient German language. I learned as much about these forgotten people as I could. Their main theme was that they revered a holy owl. This Waiulu and Waiuhu kept coming up in place names, legends, stories, and religious texts of the ancients. You can read about it in Frederick Dodson's book, Extraterrestrial Linguistics and the Secret History of Ancient Polynesia. Or you can find traces of this forgotten truth in very old newspaper articles. This old article explores the significance of the owl across various cultures. It begins by noting that, in ancient times, the owl was often regarded as an omen of misfortune or death. However, the Egyptians revered the owl, representing the goddess Minerva in this form. Similarly, the Athenians, under Minerva's protection, saw the owl as a symbol of wisdom and good fortune. As a result, the owl appeared on their ancient coins, symbolizing Athens and its influence. Beyond Greece and Egypt, the article explains how other cultures also held the owl in high esteem. The Chinese and Tartars valued the owl, with the Tartars wearing owl feathers in their caps. Interestingly, it is mentioned that some Tartar tribes continued to worship idols shaped like owls. The fascinating thing is that the owl worshippers are still around. Instead of having been defeated, they seem to have retaken control of the world. In the old days, they ruled the world openly. Today, they rule it secretly. This image is the owl statue at Bohemian Grove in California. For a long time, the world's elite, from politics, industry, banking, and entertainment, met here once a year for strange performances and rituals, as if trying to revive the old religion. This image is the area of the Capitol in Washington, D.C., shaped as an owl, built in 1793. How many people know that our elites are really into this owl thing? Yes, the owl is also perched on every $1 bill. On May 1st of 1776, a secret society called the Illuminati was founded in Ingolstadt, Germany, by Adam Weishaupt. Their declared goal was the infiltration of all sectors private and public to final world domination within only a few centuries. This was their owl-themed logo. The owl logo can be found across numerous corporate buildings, government offices and universities, so it looks like the Illuminati accomplished their mission. My research in extraterrestrial linguistics revealed that the ancients believed owls are capable of communicating with beings in other realms. This has always been the primary goal of various occultic rituals, the summoning of entities outside of our dimension. I first learned about the owl thing in 1992 while watching the TV series Twin Peaks. There, a giant appears to FBI agent Dale Cooper and tells him that the owls are not what they seem. Later in the show, we see the owl as a shape-shifting demon turning from a possessing entity named Bob into an owl. In another scene, owls are associated with extraterrestrials. Finally, a Native American elder sees the owl symbol and says that it represents a great evil. The famous TV series, poorly understood by mainstream audiences, is really about demonic possession that leads to sadistic murder, human trafficking, and other anti-human behavior. We're shown an invisible world behind ours, from which great evil and great good arise. The owl rules this underworld, which is a figurative underworld, as in world of crime, and a literal underworld as in below Earth. The subsequent series, the 2018 Twin Peaks The Return, confirms that the TV show is really about these nature of reality issues 
and not a mere crime show. There is a scene in Twin Peaks where the first atomic explosion causes legions of entities to crawl onto Earth. The explosion took place at the 33rd latitude at a place now called the Trinity Site. Is there any significance to this number? Yes, a very ancient significance. It goes back to the Bible where it says that when Lucifer fell to Earth, he took one-third of the angels with him. Another way of saying one-third is 33%, or more specifically 33.33%. Ever since that event, the fallen ones identify themselves with the number 33. The Bible says that Lucifer landed on Mount Hermon, which is, of course, also exactly on latitude 33.33. What a coincidence. Where is Mount Hermon? It's a UN buffer zone between Israel, Syria, and Lebanon. It's one of the many places on earth not run by a single nation. In a move that surprised the world, information about the owl cult was broadcast to hundreds of millions in 2017. Military people around Donald Trump, calling themselves Q, started posting about the owl folks on a message board called Achon. The Q movement spread like fire. And for the first time in hundreds of years, millions of normies got clued in on the ancient ways of the fallen ones. Then, it became the most censored topic of all time. The government tried to take down the Achon internet domain. The owner, Jim Watkins, had to go testify before Congress. Ultimately, they were not able to take down the site because, as researchers discovered, the domain was run by the Department of Defense. It's a case of one branch of government not knowing what another is doing. Trump and his army of Q researchers were ultimately removed from Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google Search, and many other platforms. The topic was made not to exist, so that the normies could continue living their pampered worldview. It was the first time a sitting president had been aggressively prevented from speaking to the public. The owl cultists awoke to what was going on a little late, but when they did, the backlash was ferocious. When I read the Q post back in 2017, I recognized the topic because I had been studying the owl worship mythology for years. What struck me the most is that Q kept referring to them as owl slash Y. This is exactly how the ancient German-speaking people referred to their owl. The word Y pronounced Y means sacred or holy to them. The Y owl is the holy owl. I'm the first and so far only author to discover and share the real and ancient meaning of Y slash owl symbolism. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying it to complain. So few people know or care about this stuff. How do people ever expect to take back their world if 99% of the people don't know the first thing about the ones running the show? The owl is a thing among elites. So is the letter Y and the number 33. I've had several encounters in my life with these people, which I'll share some time in the distant future. Here's one of Hillary Clinton's many very revealing emails that were leaked by Julian Assange, who got into big trouble for leaking these matters. Readers of extraterrestrial linguistics will know about Minerva, a reference to an extraterrestrial place called Min. This is Minerva, according to Wikipedia. In Greek mythology, a little owl, Athene Noctua, traditionally represents or accompanies Athena, the virgin goddess of wisdom, or Minerva her syncretic incarnation in Roman mythology. Because of such association, the bird, often referred to as the bold of Athena or the owl of Minerva, has been used as a symbol of knowledge, wisdom, perspicacity, and erudition throughout the Western world. And does that image of an owl or an AOL remind you of something? Why yes, the very first big internet company. The most popular Illuminati symbol is the eye in the triangle, the second most popular is now the owl. The first big internet company somehow managed to get both into the same logo just to make sure there is absolutely no doubt which team they are on. Every large international company in existence is eager and excited to advertise their allegiance. I could write a book with thousands of examples of this, but I'll provide just one more in Paramount, one of the biggest film companies in the world. Anyone get the reference? Maybe if you count the number of stars, it's 22 stars. Get it now? No? Think Mount Hermon. Lucifer took 33.33% of the angels, which were 22 angels. The Book of Enoch names each of these 22 superstars by name. 
When you're in a movie theater and watch the Paramount logo take shape, notice how the stars are falling from the sky and then landing atop the mountain. Anyway, people thought revelations on fake history were part of the Great Awakening to take down the dark side. But what if it was that very dark side that was destroyed? If the dark side were more candid, they might come out and say this. Yeah, look, we were imprisoned here against our will by the creator of this realm. So we said, okay, whatever. Let's make the best of it and build a really nice world. Utopia. Heaven on earth. And then he comes down and destroys everything we built. Because he can't tolerate any greatness besides his own. So we're really pissed off and we'll now do everything in our power to destroy his people and his creation. If the light side were more candid and quit beating around the bush, they might say. Here's the thing. They hate humans. The creator imbued them with special powers while at the same time demoting these lizard folk. Ever since then, in their envy, they're trying to debase humanity with different schemes while imprisoned down here. But the creator allows that because it puts humans to the test and helps them exercise their free choice. The creator wants to see who will choose to side with them versus him. This realm isn't even meant to be paradise anymore, more like a training camp. So, toughen up Buttercup. With that clarified, everyone would understand what's going on and we could all move on to something better. But with no clarification from higher ups, our only option left is that we ourselves become the higher ups and bring a more candid and transparent culture into this world. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.